Hello and welcome back to this uh, X32 Reaper, a new version that I wanted to demo to you today. Um, so this is basically uh, the new program here, uh, this uh, new window on top here. Uh, you can see that there is now a GUI that helps you set some parameters as well as, as you know, uh, run and stop the X32 Reaper. Um, so when you start the program, this, basically this is the window that comes up. It's important to set up correctly the parameters. Uh, for this, basically you go in Options, okay, then go down to Preferences, and you get this panel in Reaper. This panel is the... Uh, you check the control surface, which is here at the bottom, and in this control surface you select basically your configuration. Now what you can see here is I have basically the configuration. My computer running Reaper is at IP whatever 0 0.3, okay? And turns out the device seen by Reaper, which is basically my X32 Reaper program, is also running on the same computer, so its IP will also be whatever 0 0.3. Then it has a port uh, it sends to and a port it receives from, okay? Those two parameters should be copied as they are in this panel here. So this is the same value as the Reaper uh, sent to and the same value as the Reaper received from, okay, that you have here. Once you have those two values set up, you can actually say that, yes, my Reaper program is actually running, this is the host value that you put here, and the host value, you can find it here in the Reaper panel. And you set the IP address of your X32. Okay, so we can quit this and look at the uh, user section on the X32 table. And as I hit the uh, connect run button you will see some changes happening those changes have been taking place okay so now this is actually on that layer C which is uh, shown by the, the light you know on the very right uh, side this layer th uh, C is used as a transport for Reaper um, the old things quote-unquote old run as they used to run before, which means that, you know, for that Reaper, I can try to find if I can see, yes, I can see fader number one on the very left, and you will see the fader number one as well on the Reaper uh, section at the very right, okay, when I move this fader, the fader Reaper, the, the Reaper fader moves as well, I hope you can see it, okay, I'm now moving the fader reaper using a mouse, okay, and my fader actually on the X32 moves. So this is a good sign, you know, things are working both ways, all right? Now, going back to this transport section, which I want to focus on today, there are several uh, things on the uh, section. The first one is those four encoders are used to control the way the cursor will move on Reaper. Okay, this will move by beat. I don't know if you can see the cursor moving, but basically it's here, okay, and it's moving left or right, depending on how I turn this encoder. The next encoder is moving um, per measure, okay, so it moves faster, basically. The third encoder will move the cursor by marker. Now, there are no markers in this um, small piece here. So the only marker that we have are basically the beginning and the end. So when I move left, it goes to the very beginning, and then it goes to the very end if I move right, okay? So I go back somewhere in the middle, let's say in the middle of that section here, and this one actually moves per item. I have one item here, and so it's going to move at the beginning or at the end of the item. If I had 
more items, okay, it would move from one item to the other, to the next. So, back to this, and then we have buttons here. Those buttons are respectively going at the very beginning of the, the project, and number four, or number, uh, sorry, eight, is going at the very end of the project. Okay, you can see that happening. You know, this makes the uh, all section move. Then I have a play section, a play button, which is number six, is going to play. And that actually reflects in Reaper as well. The button is lit and it reflects in Reaper. If I decide to pause from Reaper using the mouse, you can see that I can pause here. And it's going to pause as well, which shows actually that this button is the pause button. This is the stop button. Don't ask me why Reaper actually uh, lights both the pause and stop button. This is the, the feedback actually is coming from Reaper. It's not you know something that I built in. So I go back to play again, you know, and the cursor you can see maybe you can see it. The cursor is moving as it plays, okay. And I can pause from here as well. And Reaper does the same thing. So play again, and I can stop. Actually, this is the stop button, okay. And I have also a record button, which is here. So at that, if I press here, you will see that the record light here on, on, on Reaper will light as well. Uh, so let's go for recording. And you can see here that, you know, Reaper has been set to be recording. So I can stop the recording, stop the play, you know, stop the whole project. There are two buttons that I didn't talk about. Uh, this this one and the next one. So this one, whatever the cursor position used is is that is going to be a start loop. Okay, so this is the start of the loop, and then I move the cursor somewhere a little bit further, and I hit the button again, and it will say this is the end of the loop. So now basically I have defined a loop in that section. If I set the repeat button, which is going to be number ten, on the repeat section here is lit, and if I hit play, the play will happen between the start and the end of the loop, and nowhere else. If during the play I hit, you know, the repeat button so that it doesn't repeat anymore, you can see I do that now, then it continues playing after the loop section. So this shows basically, I'm going to stop all this, this shows basically the transport section that I've been added to repair for X32 and hopefully you can use that uh, easily at home. Thank you.